that is what the future for nature is all about. It's about empowering a new generation of activists. It's about taking those new ideas, new thinking, thinking outside the box, and take those ideas from the fringes of conservation back to the center. It's about catalyzing innovation. And the future for nature it is valuing passion, understanding that this is what is so needed in conservation today. Well, welcome everybody to the Future for Nature Awards. It is always such a pleasure to come here each year to the Royal Burger Zoo, which really is beginning to be a second home for me. And uh, I think particularly to reconnect with all of you who are this wonderful, growing legion of animal lovers and conservationists that gather here each year in Arnhem. And that is very special, I think, because the world needs champions for the environment. Anyway, I'm very uh, proud to have been involved in Future for Nature since its inception in 2008. And um, really have to have watched this award evolve into the incredible catalyst for conservation that it is today. And tonight, I think we honor three such giants, Matthew, Ty, and Wietse. They are giants in the world of nature conservation. They stand up for something. They believe, they have passion, they inspire, and they're actually able to do something, to get things done. Critically, his tenacity, his courage, and his rigorous science have helped to train up and nurture a new generation of West African herpetologists. And he's turned a much needed spotlight onto one of the world's most endangered creatures, Matthew, please come and tell us all about it. It's, it's always an adventure convincing uh, people in Cote d'Ivoire, West Africa, and even Gabon that what they really want to do with their time is go out in a boat when they can't swim, at night when they're afraid of, of the dark, and work with crocodiles, <laughs> a potentially dangerous species. But uh, somehow we're, we're convincing them, sometimes starting with the basics, even teaching them how to swim, how to drive boats, how to find crocodiles at night, how to navigate with the GPS, etc., And um, we're actually seeing quite a lot of successes. It was the death of a mother pangolin and her baby, wrenched from their burrow to be eaten, that awakened inside him a deep feeling of injustice about what was happening to the forest and the animals that he loved. The first thing after I finished standing here is to come back to Vietnam and we create the national workshop to make the national action plan for the pangolin that is why we bring all the people in Vietnam together. His insight is to springboard off the passions that people have that are not necessarily even related to the environment, but to redirect them towards helping to build a more sustainable future. Now this, this, this world we have, it's, it's, it's us. Nature isn't something abstract that is out there, it is us. It is everything around us. We are the environment. It's not something we go out there to protect, it is us. And the question has always been, how do you connect with people? How do you make people sort of get excited about a species or a certain issue, and how do you get them, get them active? And for me, increasingly, the question became, well, how do you get all these different types of people, whether they're a welder or a, a diver or just a sailor, how do you get these people active? So maybe what separates most of you here in the audience with most of the people that were here on the stage is maybe just a small hug from a baby chimp. Because nature has that power on us. So go, go out there and experience nature to the fullest. These adventures, these interactions, they transform us. But I must warn you, because if you have those real adventures, you may end up doing some crazy, crazy things. Crazy like trying to save the pangolins of your country, where nobody else in your country cares. Or trying to breed a critically endangered species of crocodile for an entire year and failing. But then trying again to see maybe these eggs will hatch and trying again and trying again until you succeed. Or just jumping on a plane, thinking, hey, maybe I can see some of these guys plundering our oceans and maybe there's something I can do about it, who knows? <laughs> All these things may seem crazy when you do them, but actually these are the things that make the impact. These are the things that actually make most of the sense.